up on the webinar uh, password, username and password site. All right, so everybody, welcome to the Fitness Business Accelerator program. Uh, gosh, I believe this is webinar number nine. Uh, the conclusion, however, we're all going to meet at the Fitness Business Summit um, and have a great time. We'll meet the day before. And, of course, the day before, we will do a private mastermind. And then the next three days, March 8, 9, and 10, will be a fun event with lots of great surprises, amazing content, and actionable steps to help you grow your personal training or boot camp business and take it to the next level. So with that said, let us start. What you're going to learn today in this webinar is how to be more productive and organized, number one. Number two, how to run launch and learns. Uh, mini seminars in local businesses, and number three, how to get more leads and prospects from health expos and trade shows, right? There's uh, always local health expos and trade shows that are going on, and uh, you might want to go get a booth or a table. I'm going to teach you how to get the most leads and clients from there uh, so you get the most bang for your buck. Onward. Now, let's face it, productivity and being organized equals more money and more freedom, right? Don't we all know that? And when you're stressed and overworked, well, that's no bueno. You're kind of like that person there in the picture, you know, flying by the seat of your pants, not getting enough rest. When you're at home, you're thinking about business. When you're at business, you're feeling guilty about not spending enough time with your family. And so what I want to talk to you guys about first is how to get productive and organized. It's not rocket science. It's actually rather easy. It just is a change of habits, and I'm going to teach you what these habits are on this next screen. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The first thing I want you to do is uh, hire or barter out an assistant, right? I mean, the only way you're going to get more productive and more organized is if you have somebody helping you. Now, if you don't have the money to hire out for an assistant, now typically an assistant will run anywhere from $10 to, let's say, 12 or $13 an hour. You don't even need somebody full time. If you're just kind of starting out, you're in the, uh, let's say you're making just under 100,000 uh, a year as a personal trainer. Gosh, maybe you're making 30, 40, 50,000 a year. You know, you can hire a part time assistant to do some of the work for you. And I'll, and I'll explain to you what that is. Now, <clears throat> if it's an issue of, hey man, I'm cash poor, I don't have the money for an assistant, so I have to do all the stuff myself. Well, listen, you don't. That's a cop out because you can always barter out an assistance job, right? You can train somebody in your boot camps, in your group training program, even on a one-on-one -on -one basis a couple times a month in exchange for some work that they can do for you. So depending on the type of program you run, you might be doing some one-on-one -on -one training for this person that you're going to barter out, or you might just put them inside your groups uh, where it doesn't cost you any more money and they get value from the workouts and, of course, they are part-time assistants for you. Now, what does the assistant do? Well, the assistant helps you focus on the things that matter to you most. Now, if you're on this webinar, if you're listening to this webinar, you're involved in this coaching program, it's because you want to improve your business metrics. You don't want to be a better trainer, per se. You know, I assume that you guys are all awesome trainers, have the certifications, education, background, and skill sets, and that you're always sharpening your skill sets in that way. But if you want to focus on marketing, and selling and making getting more clients, then you've got to do that majority of the time. That is your 5%. Your 5%, as I always talk about, is marketing and selling, right? The other stuff, now, of course, if you're a trainer, then obviously, if you're still training clients, then part of your 5% is still also delivering the end results, the training. But otherwise, you're probably going to manage your trainers, right? Otherwise, it's a matter of delegation, and you delegate to your assistant the trivial 95%. So there's a critical 5% that you're going to do all the time, uh, which is marketing and selling. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you will delegate the other 95% to your assistant. And those things like doing the books, uh, follow-up phone calls for new prospects and leads, uh, collecting slips from lead boxes, um, maybe if a credit card is declined from a client, you know, they would do the follow-up phone call and they would reach out to that client and get their new credit card information. That's not in your 5%, right? If a client calls in sick and needs to be rescheduled, um, that's something that your assistant would do. There's a lot of trivial stuff. I mean, if you need to buy toilet paper and you have a personal training studio, uh, if you need to buy supplies, those are all things your assistant can do. All those things are 10 to $12 an hour jobs, and you should not be doing it because you're getting paid way more, or at least you should be getting paid 
way more to do this higher level job, right? And so marketing and selling are things that your assistant typically can't do well, uh, if at all. And so those are the things that are critical. That's the thing that drives the business, drives the metrics, gets you more clients. So you delegate to your assistant. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to make and work off of lists. Now, this is really, really important. The number one reason why productivity is low in most people is not because uh, they don't have anything to do or they've got too much to do. It's they don't know what to do first. And so what I figured out about four years ago was that if I make a list of everything I need to get done tomorrow, not everything I need to get done in my business over the next year, just for tomorrow, it might be a list of three to five things, maybe six things, seven things most, right? Now, if I make a list on a steno pad or on my iPhone of things I need to do tomorrow morning when my ass hits the seat or when I get in my, my, my personal training studio, then I can immediately start working on the number one thing on the list, get it done, and cross it off the list. I can do the number two thing on the list, get it done, cross it off the list. There's something very powerful, very empowering, and very motivating about getting things done and then crossing it off your list. Now, in that, in that way, you want to batch process. This is for efficiency and productivity, right? So in other words, if you have to call three clients to, do a, to set up a, um, well, I guess you wouldn't be setting up sales consultations, your assistant would. But let's say you're going to do sell somebody over the phone, which I don't recommend, but let's just hypothetically go over that. You're going to sell a client over the phone. Well, if you have three people to call, you're going to call all three of them back to back within the same time frame. You're not going to call Mrs. Jones now and then Mr. Jones later and then the other person later on, right? Unless you really have to, if their schedule doesn't permit. But otherwise, you're going to do all your calls at the same time, all your emails at the same time. If you're going to write any email broadcasts, you're going to write them all at the same time. You batch process like items, and by doing that, you become more efficient and more organized. Now, for things that are repetitive, right? You know, if your assistant has a script to collect credit card information, if your assistant has a script uh, that they follow to set appointments, if your credit assistant has a script to um, follow up on clients who missed a workout session, right? Those scripts should all be put into a systems and operations book that I like to affectionately call the alien abduction manual because your alien abduction manual is the thing that your assistant and you will refer back to if your assistant ever got abducted or you fired them or whatever. So the point here is that when you are doing something that's a repetitive task, right? You want to create a system for it in a three ring binder and, and systemize it. All your closing processes, your best marketing systems, how they worked, um, nutrition program, systemize them. What did you talk about first? What did you give them second? What did you, how did you follow up with them? What is the frequency of follow up? All those things need to be systemized so that you are consistent and don't have to always fly by the seat of your pants, right? Things that are repetitive should be systemized and put into a three ring binder, lovingly called the alien abduction manual. So that if you got abducted, your assistant got abducted, I can just come right in and take over because it's like, oh, okay, I got to make calls. This is the formula that I'm going to follow. Now, finally, the thing you're going to do is you're going to find your magic time, and you're going to stick to it. My friend Craig Ballantyne talks about the magic time, and it's really important time. For me, magic time is around 8.30 a.m. to about 10.30 a.m., about a two-hour window. I get a lot of work done. I probably get about six or seven hours worth of work done because I'll do it either at home after my kids have left for school where I have peace and quiet and I'm not at the HQ around my staff, or I'll go find a Starbucks far away from HQ so that I don't accidentally run into people from my st my, uh, my HQ. And uh, I'll go to a Starbucks, you know, put my earbuds on so I'm not interrupted by anybody. And those two hours I spent plowing on all the stuff that are within my 5%. If I have to do coaching emails, if I have to do coaching calls, if I have to send out a broadcast, a blog post, right? All those things happen then and there. Um, for our vendors, our contacts, my business partners, all the communication happens in that two-hour window. And a lot of crossing out of my list happens in that two-hour window. So your magic time is that time that you feel most productive, that you can have peace and quiet, and you can put all distractions aside. And it's typically an hour, hour and a half, two-hour window that you get a lot done. So you got to find your magic time and stick to it relentlessly no matter what. So then, that's the secret to productivity and organization. It's not rocket science. I promise you, it's not rocket science. Most people just really make it a big deal 
and think that it should be bigger than it is. It's really not. Now, moving on to lunch and learns. All right, so the key with lunch and learns here is to be one, totally under the radar when you're selling, right? I love doing lunch and learns and they produce a lot of results for our Fit Body Bootcamp owners and for my coaching clients because it's a total under the radar way of selling. It adds massive value, positions you as the expert, builds your credibility on the spot. Or again, it's the marketing, people's marketing resistance is down because you're not marketing to them, you're educating them. And I'm gonna show you the process in a minute. And of course, it builds your email list and finally gets you clients, which at the end of the day is what you want, right? Clients. So how do you do it? First and foremost, you're going to target businesses that have 15 to 50 employees, right? You don't want less than 15 employees because typically about, you know, a half to three fourths of the employees end up coming to these lunch and learns. And so if you have a place that has like whatever, five or 10 employees, it's not really going to be worth your time. On the flip side, if you've got a place that's got 100, 200, 500 employees, it's not that you can't target them. You just want to do at least 50 at a time because if the group is too large, then it's no longer as personal. People aren't going to feel comfortable asking questions and therefore that connection is not going to be made. So ideally, you'd have 15 to 50 employees in front of you and so typically you want to target businesses that have 15 to 50 employees. And also, those are small enough businesses where you can talk to the decision maker easily, get in there, and you don't have to go through a chain of command or gatekeepers and get frustrated. Number two, you know, you have to understand where you can find these locations. Well, typically your clients may own these businesses or they might work for these local businesses. And if that's not the case, you certainly can drive around town or look around uh, locally at businesses and see if they would qualify in that 15 to 50 employee category for you. And if they would, then you're going to offer them by calling them or walking in. You're going to offer them a lunch and learn. Now, <clears throat> don't wait for them to ask you, well, what exactly is a lunch and learn? You're just going to outright tell them what a lunch and learn is. You say a lunch and learn is this process where I'll buy you lunch and you can just get it catered from Subway where you show up with a big plastic tray of sandwiches, right? Um, hey, I'll buy you lunch and then for the next 30 to 45 minutes, I'll educate you and your, and your employees here on how to lose fat and get some exercise in even if you're busy and don't have a lot of time. Now, it's important to say that because the number one objection people are going to have when they hear about this lunch and learn is, well, I'm going to be too busy to even do what they say anyway, so I'm not going to attend the lunch and learn. But if the lunch and learn is positioned as, hey, it's free lunch, right, and it's education on how you can lose fat and work out even if you're busy and don't have time, you just overcame their objections. And so these employees will congregate together in the lunch hall, in the break area, then all you have to do is go through your presentation. There's no sales pitch, so let the decision maker know that, hey, I'm not here to hard close anybody, I'm not gonna soft close anybody, I'm not gonna offer my programs at all, zero, zero sales pitch. And so what you're going to do is typically, you wanna educate them <coughs> on things that have to do with proper eating, the frequency eating of eating, what are some of the you know better ways to read a food label, right? Like a, like, like a nutrition label on, on a food item. Um, how the top ways are of, of consuming your food so that you don't spike your insulin levels, you don't eat carbs late at night, you focus on your carbs earlier in the day, why you should eat this type of carb, fibrous carbs versus starchy or sweet carbs, right? The benefits. And ultimately, you want to talk about giving some three to five exercises that they could typically do within a 10 or 15 minute time frame at home. Now, now look, no one's going to do this at home. So it's not like you're giving them workouts and nutrition plans to follow and they're going to do it at home. They're not going to come to you. You're giving them content. At the end of the day, everybody wants handholding. And so everybody wants to work with an expert. What you're doing here is you're demonstrating your expertise and your credibility and your positioning, your knowledge. Now, if you don't know how to craft a good uh, 20, 30 minute presentation like this, all you have to do is go through the entire closed client's sales presentation in front of this group minus the selling part, right? So you stop at the selling part. So you go through the muscle building and, and, and you know, one pound of muscle burns 50 calories a day, et cetera, right? And through the muscle building process, why we break down muscle during our workouts, how eating and resting rebuilds those muscles, the proper way to eat, 
right? Then you go through the target heart rate zone and you talk about high intensity interval training versus steady state cardio. Uh, but where you're going to transition into your sales presentation, you just stop right there. You don't transition into your sales presentation and, uh, you say, look, you know, this th this is it. That's my presentation. I, I, I hope you got a lot of value from this. And oh, by the way, who has questions? And so you're going to spend another five or ten minutes answering questions. And uh, before you go, you want to reward the attendees. Now, how are you going to reward the attendees? Well, it's simple. What you're going to do is you're going to thank them for joining you and offer them a free fat loss or flat abs report. Now, both of those you can get from your Fit Pro newsletter account. It's a free report, and so I would say something to the effect of, hey, guys, I'm, I'm so thankful that you guys spend the time with me here at lunch. I know you could have taken the time to go elsewhere, but you spent the time with me, and I really appreciate that. And I hope you got a lot of value from what I shared today. And what I'd like to do is offer you a free fat loss report or the, I have this uh, flat abs report that teaches you how to flatten your abs and get a better midsection, and you can do it all at home. And I'm going to pass this clipboard around or this iPad around, and I just need your email address so that I can email you the free PDF, right? Now, if you've got an iPad, what you can do is you can just pull up a FitPro Newsletter squeeze page and have them opt right in, right, if you're connected to their internet. If not, you can just go the old school way, get a clipboard, and have them write their email address, and you're good to go. So one way or another, you're going to send them the free report, right, or ebook. And when you get back to your location, you're going to follow up with an email that offers them the free, um, a free week or a free session or two at your personal training studio or boot camp, right? So here's what happens. You educate them, you build rapport, you position yourself, and you give them great content. And then you thank them for joining you there, and you offer them a free report or flat abs report or ebook. And you get their contact info. So you're still coming to them with value. And then you follow up with another email and you deliver more value and say, look, because you took the time to attend uh, that lunch and learn, I want to offer you a free week because I can tell you're serious about getting in shape and losing fat. And I'd love to help you. Come try us out for a week. And then, of course, you make them the irresistible offer once they come in and work out with you for that week, right? So once they're working out, they've done a workout or two. Right, sit them down, go through your close clients presentation, just time just the sales portion of it. And one of the greatest offers that I've seen, and my friend and uh, coaching client does this, Cable, um, in uh, in Canada, is um, he he typically offers thirty percent off the first month and then ten percent off each of the following months. But in this particular case for the lunch and learn, if I were you, I would offer fifty percent off the first month and then ten percent off each following month if they choose to get on a program today. Right, so it's a real good sense of urgency. It's an irresistible offer. They've already worked out with you a couple times now. They've 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 been exposed to you. They've been educated. They've been informed, and now they get to actually work out for half off on the first month, and then get ten percent off every following month, which is a really good offer. Right? I hope that made sense to you. Of course, if you have any questions, you can just ask them either now in the question box or just wait until we get to the end, and then give me your questions, and I'll gladly answer them for you. Now, let's talk about the expo and health fair, right? If there's a trade show, expo, or health fair in town, what do you do? Well, first and foremost, what you want to do is, is you want to understand that you have a mission to accomplish here. And the mission, first and foremost, is to add value, right? So you get a booth or a table, is to add value to the attendees, to the event. You always want to be the value adder. You never want to be that place or that booth that is just you know harassing people, trying to just get contact info, etc. <clears throat> Number two, of course, you want to get leads and prospect email addresses in the coolest, most awesomest way possible, right? And I'm going to show you how you're going to do that. Number three, you want to be remembered, right? You want people to remember you in your booth and not to get, get you confused with every other booth out there. And of course, finally, you want to have a reason to contact them. And I'm going to give you that reason in just a second. Let me get a sip of water. So then how do you do it? So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some stuff. You'll need a big jar of M&Ms. Now, now, this is something that my friend and Fit Body Bootcamp owner does, um, uh, Jeff Sherman does. Um, and, and so it's kind of an idea that I've kind of swiped from him and tweaked and modified. And it's been working for other Fit Body Bootcamp owners and some other coaching clients of mine. And so you'll need a big jar of M&Ms. Typically, the jar should be like the size of a gallon, like a pickle jar, like those big one-gallon pickle jars or even bigger, right? And you're going to fill it up with a whole bunch of M&Ms. Now, when you do, keep in mind how many M&Ms you're putting in there 
or at least how many bags of M&Ms, because you're going to need to know how many calories that jar has. And we'll get to that in just a second. You're also going to need an iPad or two. You're going to need your FitPro newsletter squeeze page for a free fat loss report, right? And you can easily generate a squeeze page and just keep it up on your iPad. And I'll explain why you're going to need that and how that's going to help you get a ton of email addresses pretty quickly. And then, of course, from Amazon.com, if you don't already have it, you're going to go to Amazon.com. You're going to buy a pound of fat and a pound of muscle. It's that rubber plastic thing that looks really, really close to a pound of fat and a pound of muscle. And finally, you're going to spend a whopping $49 and get your Omron body fat tester if you don't have it already. Those are the equipment that you need to take with you to the uh, Expo or Health Fair. Now, at your booth, you're going to display the pound of of fat and pound of muscle. You're going to have it there on hand and you might even be holding it and just kind of showing it off to people. Hey, guess what this is? You know, and of course people are, oh, what is that? It's a pound of fat, a pound of muscle, right? And of course you're going to display the jar of M&Ms. Now, you also want to have two good looking girls walking around and raffling off those two iPads, right? So you got a lot of things going on. One, you're going to have people, you're going to put a sign in front of those M&Ms that say, hey, guess how many calories in this M&M? in this container of M&Ms and win a free iPad, right? And so people are going to be guessing how many uh, calories in there. So you just need a form that says, you know, a number of calories so they can write in the number of calories. Uh, they're going to write in their name and their email address and put, put that in the raffle box. And then, of course, at the end of the thing, um, or maybe the next day, even better, the day after, you're going to see who came close to <coughs> winning the iPad. Uh, at the same time, you're going to have you're going to draw people into your booth using the pound of fat and a pound of muscle, right? People are going to be curious what that is. You draw them into your booth. Hey, can I give you a, a body fat test? And this way, we can figure out how much fat and how much muscle you have. And oh, by the way, while you're here, why don't you guess how many M and M's are in this jar? And um, just write it down on this piece of paper with your email address. And if you got close or you hit the number on the head, you win a free iPad, right? So these are tools to draw people into your booth, right? Curiosity provokes um, provokes action. So now the two girls walking around with the iPads, of course, for people who are not coming by your booth, you want these two girls to be walking around in the other aisles and you want them just to approach people and say, hey, would you like to know how you can win this iPad? Uh, there's no gimmick. You just enter your email address in here. We're going to send you a free fat loss report because we are the local fitness experts here in town. We're going to send you a free fat loss report so everybody wins because you get a free fat loss report or a nutrition tip, uh, recipe book, whatever it is that you have. Um, just pull any one of the nine reports or ebooks from FitPro Newsletter on the iPad, and uh, you're probably connected to the internet anyway, hopefully. And people can just enter their email addresses, and by doing that, that's how they've entered the drawing. So the reason you want two iPads is, uh, you know, one person is going to win because they guessed how many M&Ms or how many calories in those M&Ms in the big jar of M&Ms. And another person is going to win because they opted in on those two iPads that are kind of roaming around the expo. And uh, by opting in, they're going to win one of those iPads. So I hope you kind of see what's going on here. All these multiple ways of you reaching out to the uh, people in that expo in the health fair and getting their contact info in the coolest possible way, right? Now, after the event, you're going to email each person and thank them for attending. Let them know it was nice meeting them and that, and that, um, and then offer them to invite them to train at your place for a week or at least for a couple sessions if you're a personal trainer, right? And then you want to give them options. You want to give them options for start dates. So I would probably send an email something like this. And the subject line, here it is right down here would be, it was great meeting you with a happy face, right? All lowercase. That's your subject line. And the email might go something to this effect. Hey, this is Bedros. I was just at the Health Expo. I had the fitness and fat loss booth. It was great meeting you. Thanks for stopping by and putting your name in there to win the free iPad. I'll let you know in the next couple of days if you're the winner or not. However, because you took the time to stop by our booth and you took the time to come to the Expo, I'd love to offer you a free week to try us out at our fitness boot camp or free two personal training sessions with me at my personal training studio. Um, and this is a, you know, whatever it is, a $70 value. And I'm only offering it to the people who came and met us at our booth. And so you're one of those unique individuals. And I want to thank you for that. Now, would you like to come tomorrow or the next day to start your first workout session with us? In that week, you can expect to gain more energy and possibly even lose a couple pounds 
and uh, don't be surprised if you lose an inch or two. Um, so if you would like to start tomorrow or the next day, just reply to this email. Let me know which day you want to start or call me at this number, yours truly, Bedros, right? It would just be a nice, simple kind of personal email like that with that subject line that I have for you and it would get it opened. Now, of course, once you've done that, that's easy enough because those people who reply and say, hey, I want to start tomorrow or the next day, fantastic. Once they're a couple sessions into their workouts, you're going to sit down with them, go through their closed client system, right, to educate them further, and then you're going to go right into your sales process, lay out your programs that you normally offer, and say, hey, look, because you're coming to us from this health expo, you get a special deal because whatever program you choose here, you're going to get 50% off your first month, and you're going to get 10% off each month thereafter. You see where we're going here? So 50% off the first month and 10% off each month thereafter. That's that's it. And so you let them know there's a one-time only offer. So, you know, there is no, can I go home and think about it and ask my wife or whatever. It, you know, obviously you want to build a lot of value so you don't get a lot of objections. And you let them know, hey, this is a one-time only offer. And I would still follow it up with a guarantee. Look, you're welcome to, why don't you sign up right now? And you're welcome to go talk to your wife. And I'll still give you your 50% off the first month because you're signing up now, go talk to your wife or your spouse or uh, or your husband or whoever, and uh, you have 30 days still to try this out. So this month that you're paying half off, you actually have a 30-day guarantee that even on day 30, if you decide it wasn't right for you, I'll give you your money back after training with us. And so you're going to get people on board, and bingo, bingo, you have yourself a new client, right? And what's really cool is there's not a lot of pressure to this at all because everything kind of led the person down the funnel or up the ascension ladder into you connecting with them in the coolest, most awesomest way possible and then converting them into ongoing clients by making them an irresistible offer this way. All right, onward. Questions. Now, I see there's already a question here. So, uh, oh, oh. Sorry about that. Wait, let me bring up my graphic here for the questions because I did a lot of uh, a lot of searching on the interwebs to find that for you. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's a little old lady. Ah, every time I do that, it goes away. It's a little old lady waving. And, uh, well, just don't look under the desk. All right, so some of the questions we have here. Um, could it be iPods as well? Yeah, I guess it can be iPods, dude. I don't see why it can't be iPods. Um, because you can pull up a website on an iPod, you can put up a pull up a website on an iPad Mini. Um, obviously, anything that you can use as a prize and as a irresistible offer, you're going to be able to give away as a gift. Not a problem. Any other questions that I can help you guys with here? Oh, hey, thanks, James Bond, and you rock too, my friend. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. And uh, by the way, I appreciate that email. Uh, your emails are best, and I don't write that fast enough. Uh, I have a health expo to go to. Let's. Mm -mm -mm. Can you email or post that script to the Fitness Accelerator web? Thank you. Yeah, that should be easy enough. I could uh, I could knock out that email for you guys, and we'll have it up by tomorrow along with this video. How about that on the Fitness Business Accelerator website? So um, you're good to go there. All right, Teresa, what do you have? Uh, this is great. I have an expo in March. For 300 women, holy cow! So you're gonna uh, you're gonna kick butt there with uh, with those 300 women. Not literally though. Shauna, hey, thank you, Shauna. That's very cool of you. Um, and uh, and uh, I'll see you in March as well. Hope to see you, Teresa, Leandro, the Health Expo. Um, it, yeah, it should be local. Exactly, it should be local. It should be usually your city will put one on, or the Chamber of Commerce, or Rotary Club. Because you want this thing to be local because you want to pull clients to it, right? Otherwise, there's really no point of, uh, of, of doing it. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Make sure it's local and make sure that it's within driving distance. You know, the people who come to there are live within driving distance of where you operate your business. Um, Matt Hayes, what type of business do you recommend hitting up for the Lunch and Learns? <coughs> Excuse me. Really any type of business. But if I had to pinpoint one particular type, I would say the type of business that has cubicles in it. People that are sitting in cubicles and working on a computer or, or you know, doing, doing the work on the phone. Because those are people who are typically sedentary and may have enough money to join your fitness program 
versus people who are working in a warehouse and are already active and their argument is going to be, hey, I'm in a warehouse, I'm already active, why would I really need to uh, do a fitness program? So if the place has a cubicles or, you know, any kind of business, maybe even uh, hair salons, right? Those hair salons that have like, you know, 10, 15, 20 seats, um, that's a great place, man, because those hairstylists talk all day long with their with their clients. All right. Yeah, the LA one is pointless, Leandro. All right, uh, James Bond. James says, "Is there any anyone in the UK here that is a, that is important? Each council to put two million pounds into obesity." Wow, wow, good question. If there's anyone in the UK here, there's uh huh. Well, James, I hope you find the right person, man, to help you out with that. Um, Joe, you're very welcome. Um, any good time management books? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good time management book, Joe. Uh, no BS Time Management by Dan Kennedy, right? Fun to read, easy to read, uh, and he gets right to the point. No BS Time Management by Dan Kennedy. And also, guys, I know I've been talking about it a lot lately. You think I'm making commission from it, but I promise you I'm not. It's a great book called Turning Pro. All of you should read it. Pick it up and read it. I don't make a penny from it. I don't even know who the author is. In fact, I bought a ton of copies and mailed it out to my uh, info group coaching clients. And, uh, you, you know, I, I, we just saw attitudes change immediately. They all went from their amateur ways to, you know, a, a pro mindset of, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. And they started sleeping on time, not goofing off, and uh, taking their businesses more seriously. So Turning Pro is another great book. Um Thank you, sir, just to remind you that you rock. Dude, you're so good for my self-esteem. Hey, you're very welcome, Sylvia. And, um, you know, let me know if I can help in any other way. Adrian, hey, Bedros, uh, Adrian here. Uh, any good tips on how to maximize TV spots when you only have a few minutes? See you at Fitness Business Summit. Uh, shots on me. <laughs> cool, man. We will uh, drink up and have a good time. Uh any good tips on, you know what, my coaching client Samantha Taylor did pretty well. So did, uh, so did, so did Dan Ritchie with TV Spots. And both of them have one thing going for them, which was um, testimonials. They had before and after pictures left and right in the TV Spots where they showcased clients. And it wasn't a big flashy commercial. It was very down-home type of commercial. They had uh, lots of before and after pictures where they showcase Susan, who lost so many pounds and so many inches, and then meet Bob, he lost so many pounds and so many inches. And then at the end, they had an irresistible and an introductory offer. And so you could do something to the effect of, you know, get three free training sessions for uh, $49, or you could do, you know, get two weeks of fitness boot camp for $29, and we'll donate all the money to uh, the local Boys and Girls Club. But, you know, testimonials, and then who you are, what you do, before and after pictures and testimonials, which is social proof, obviously, right? And then a irresistible offer and call to action. So TV st TV spots use Bedros' letter on Fitpro newsletter. Yep, yep, that also works. There's a letter within Fitpro newsletter that you can use to end up on the television to get a hold of the media. Just log into your Fitpro newsletter account, look around in the broadcast section, and you will find that letter. Uh, B, I haven't been able to get your live seminar the past few months, but I found time to check it out today. Awesome material. Thank you. You're very welcome, Bill Carney. Hope you're doing great, and I'll hope that we see you at the summit as well. Um, all right, guys. Looks like that's all the questions. Thank you so much. Uh, my voice is starting to crackle, and I'm losing it, so uh, I think we'll just wrap up this webinar here. And uh, looking forward to seeing all of you at Fitness Business Summit uh, next month. Take care, guys. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected.